Hi there, Joel from Jonesy's. Uh, today we're working on a 99 Toyota Land Cruiser 100 Series. Um, customer brought it to me complaining of chattering, squeaking brakes, and poor braking performance. So, upon uh, just a quick visual inspection, um, it appears that uh, somebody, I don't know if it was him, um, decided to go ahead and uh, put uh, some uh, ceramic uh, brake pads on it. Um, and in doing so, um, it, there's a little anti-rattle uh, clip that is missing. And so that, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, when you're driving the vehicle, that's what you would constantly hear and then the noise would go away. That's because there's a little spring uh, that uh, is missing. So we ordered those. We also ordered um, some new uh, 360 Performance rotors, uh, drilled and slotted rotors for this. Um, because ceramic uh, pads seem to work better with uh, drilled and slotted rotors. Also, um, they help to uh, prevent any kind of uh, glazing of the pad surface. So anyway, um, pretty straightforward job. Most people can handle this stuff. You do need some specialty tools. Um, the the uh, big axle nut socket that is here that's a 54 millimeter, um, you have to have that. But other than that, kind of basic hand tools. I'm um, going to also need some uh, some punches, some ways to drive in bearings. We're going to actually replace this, these bearings. This uh, rig has 150 some odd thousand miles on it. So um, it appears that these are the original rotors and the bearings probably have never been done. So I'll show you guys how to pack those wheel bearings um, and get everything set up. So step one is going to be to uh, compress these um, pistons so that we can have enough room to remove the caliper. So, um, on something like this, I usually can um, compress them enough with just a big pair of channel locks. Again, this uh, if you do this at home, it can save you a, a substantial amount of money and um, you know that you got good quality stuff. So, next thing, will be we'll take the we'll take the um, <coughs> caliper bracket off It's a good idea to uh, spend some time and kind of inspect a lot of your other components. Um, there's a good idea to look at all your brake lines and your shocks. Like these shocks look pretty, pretty old, um, and get all that stuff replaced. Since you're digging into it, you might as well do that stuff if you if you can. It's not that difficult. Okay, so now got the caliper bracket off. Piston's been compressed. Set that aside. If, uh, if it won't sit up there um, kind of on its own, then it's a good idea to take some tie wrap or some wire and wire it up so that it won't fall and then damage your brake line. So next thing um, I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little, little chisel and I'm going to knock this little dust cap off. Comes off pretty easily. Set that aside. Get a rag here, and there should be a little snap ring in here that actually holds the axle. I'll use some snap ring pliers, but you can actually just dig that out with a screwdriver if you are so inclined. You don't have to have a snap ring pliers, it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, now 14 millimeter. I'm gonna lo loosen all the hub nuts. Okay, a couple different ways to get this cone washer off um, with varying degrees of success. The manual says you take a punch and you hit the end of the shaft. 
And um, in my experience, I've had some success with this method. So do what you do what you guys want, but uh, I've had better success just gently tapping the case like that. You don't want to beat on it so hard that you actually distort this flange, but it uh, does knock that um, cone out. So you can try the, uh, the manual version where you pound on the end of the shaft. I've seen guys actually screw up the end of that stud by using this method. And as you can see, I'm hitting it pretty hard and it's not, not wanting to come out. So, just take a little tap there and it pops it off. So do it however you guys want to. Like I said, um, I've had minimal, minimal success of, of pounding on the end of the, the flange. Okay, I got all the uh, cones knocked free. Get those off of here. And we can remove this flange and that'll give us access to the uh, large lock nut and then we'll get the bearings. Set those aside. Now inside here you can see you've got the big lock <coughs> nut and the locking tab. You've got to bend flat. You see it right there? I bent that flat. Now I'll take my axle nut socket. So the outside one should be pretty tight because that kind of locks everything together. Now you need to fish out the uh, locking tab. And it will have a tab right there bent the other direction. So as soon as I uh, get that out, I set it on the bench. And then you just hammer it flat. So when you put it back together, you can uh, identify which of those tabs line up with the uh, flats on the nuts and um, bend them over. So now, This one should pretty much only be hand tight. So, what I'm after is I'm after the outer bearing and washer. There's the washer. And there's the outer bearing. Now, there's a little, there's a little a little tip if you're going to be reusing your seal and your bearings. And what you do is you take that bearing, that outer bearing out, and then thread one of the axle nuts back on, it's all greasy. This is a little trick to remove the bearing and the uh, seal. 
gloves are good, but sometimes you just need to Okay, so I'll get that guy threaded on there. Just like that, leave it kind of loose. And then, I'll have the rotor kind of go up past the outer race. And then in one quick jerking motion, we're just gonna pop that bearing and seal out all in one shot. Like that. So that pulls that bearing and that seal out. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it pulls it out without actually damaging it. So we'll set the rotor over there. And we can take the nut off. Remove the bearing, and then here you can see the seal. You can clean up that seal. So we got bearing, we've got seal, and all looks like it uh, definitely needs to be uh, repacked. So um, only one more item to disassemble, and that is the rotor. So we're going to take the rotor over here to the bench. to get the center hub uh, separated from the actual rotor itself. There's five bolts that bolt the hub to the rotor. This can be kind of a pain because the rotor and the hub have probably rusted themselves together. I'm going to spray some penetrating lubricant in there. And get a hammer. And we'll try and bang this out. Um, if we get lucky, it'll come apart. If we don't, then we'll have to... It looks like it's going to cooperate. So, well, it looks like we got made some progress. So now, Okay, so now what you can do is you can actually what I'm doing is I'm taking a, a little kind of a chisel to, to slowly work on getting this rotor hub separated. And as you can see, we got one side, we've got a gap, and we don't have a gap on the other side. So work on this side and we'll just slowly start working our way around.
the new rotors actually are zinc plated, which helps prevent this uh, kind of adhesion. Just gotta take your time and uh, not don't rush because when you start rushing stuff, that's when. start damaging so we're getting we're making progress. so the um, <clears throat> races are pounded in all the grease is out now it's time to uh, make sure that the uh, mating surface of the hub to where the rotor goes is uh, clean and does not have any burrs so I just take a, a file and you want to run that file over top of this surface making sure that uh, there's no burrs and that it's nice and clean. Um, the other thing that you want to do after you have run this file is run the file around the outside of the hub here. Knock off any of that big rust and then I take a uh, wire brush and wire brush kind of see the cloud of rust. And, uh, and you can see this surface in here. You want to try to have that be clean and then this surface be clean. So I'll go ahead and run this back through the parts washer one last time and then we'll uh, set the uh, new rotor on and bolt it up. So the hub is uh, all prepped, ready to go. So now, take the uh, rotor. And you want to just set it on top, and then get your bolts. Get all those bolts started back into the hub before you. Uh, Press this back on there. So these are uh, usually a pretty darn tight fit. Get them on there. Sometimes I've had to pull them down with the actual bolts. So I'm going to buzz these up with the impact gun, then I'm going to torque them. And then after I torque it, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put a little bit of grease inside this cavity, put my bearing in, and then pound uh, my seal in. Cut. Okay, bearings put in. I'm going to put the big washer. Like that. And the first nut. Get that guy started. What I like to do is snug it up a little bit, roll it around. That'll help to kind of seat all the bearings and get everything lubricated. Then back off the nut and then just heme man it. As much as you can with your hand and then feel it make sure that it's nice and snug and there's no in and out play um, on the rotor so then after that first nut goes the lock ring like that and the second lock nut And this one you actually snug down pretty darn tight. Okay, 
Okay? So you got that. Then you look in here and you find a uh, flat. You bend the tab over one way. And then you bend the tab over the other way. One of them goes in, one of them goes out. Matt locks those completely in place. Now, this gasket actually stuck to the hub and is still in, in perfectly good condition. Um, and since we're not really, we're only sealing grease, it's not that big of a deal to reuse this as long as it's not torn. If it is torn, then you could put a little bit of sealer on it. But uh, since it's uh, untouched and still in great shape, we're just going to go ahead and put this plate back on like so. Get all of our cones and our washers. a cone and a washer and a nut. Cones, got all my washers, I just gotta thread the nuts on. And these do not need to be very tight. These strip out very easily. It's not uncommon to see older ones that have just been stripped or broken off. Ones that are missing. Tighten those guys down in a crisscross pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down, but before I tighten all those down, you want to don't forget to put your snap ring back on as well as. dust cap. So all this is all buttoned up. I got the lock on there. I got all those bolts tight. Bearings adjusted now. Before I go ahead and put the caliper back on, you've got to make sure you clean the brake rotor. So, it's harder to turn now because we're turning that axle. But you can see all the stuff, so all the dirt. You want to make sure you clean this rotor. Because you don't want grease contaminating your pad. So now, we'll take our caliper, set it back in there like so. Put those bolts in, tighten them up. Now always, always a good idea to uh, reference your factory service manual um, for uh, proper torque 
on all these bolts. So this job, um, if you follow all the kind of steps that I outlined, um, is definitely doable by your uh, at home. You don't need any real special tools except for the uh, large socket there for that axle nut. And then it's kind of standard uh, punches and drifts, um, some sockets, and you can uh, you can do this. Um, in your driveway. So, um, thanks to uh, 360 Performance Rotors for continuing to supply uh, extremely high quality brake parts for us, rotors. And um, thanks for watching, and good luck.